Okay, so last time we had this kind of drawing and uh, what we did is that we estimated the amount of water that is required to irrigate this plot of land. But the question is, as irrigation engineers, is that enough? The answer is no. We also need to have the elevation values or the contours that will guide us to know where the key infrastructure in our farm will be located. There are several ways that we can use to come up with, with contours or with elevation values for our farm, but the most common one or the conventional method is to have the surveyors going around your farm and coming up with the elevation values. But sometimes we don't have such a luxury and what we can do is to use GIS to come up with the contours or the elevation values. So that being said, in today's tutorials, I'm going to show you how we can use GIS together with digital elevation models to come up with the contour map or with the elevation values that we can use to allocate our key infrastructure in this proposed scheme or farm. So keep on watching. So what I need to do is to export this file in KML format. And uh, what I did is to go uh, from here and I saved it as a KML file. So after that, what I did is to open QGIS, of course, which is a GIS tool that I am using currently. Then from there, I imported the, KM, the KML file that I exported from, from Google Earth and um, I opened it in QGIS. Okay, so this is the same drawing uh, that we had in uh, Google Earth. Of course, if you can see, the, they look quite similar, except for now, I have it in, for now, I am having, I have it in QGIS. Okay, so from here what I did, I added the background map to double check everything and make sure that everything is in order. So from here what I did is to convert uh, this KML file in geo package. Of course you can even convert it in shapefile format, but for me I preferred to use a geo package file format. Now from here what I did, I went on and downloaded this digital elevation model and as you can see, this is the digital elevation model that covered this area of course the area in which my farm is located and if you can tell if i deactivate this digital elevation model my farm is quite small but this digital elevation model covered a huge area compared to what i wanted okay so from here just to make sure that my digital elevation model or my dem covered only the farm what i did was to use clipping method and uh, what clipping does is that it takes a very huge digital elevation model and they clip it okay and clip it to make sure that it covers only the area of interest so for my case what i did i went in this area of course in raster then i used the extraction function then from here what i did is to uh, clip raster by uh, by mask layer and from here, what I did was to make sure that I select my digital elevation model, which was uh, this one. Then from there, I make sure that the mask layer, the mask layer, which is this one, is where my farm is located. So what QGIS is doing is that it makes sure that this digital elevation model, which is quite huge, is clipped and it covers only the area of interest which for our case was uh, this farm okay this one here this one so after that i just click run and everything uh, went quite well so i ended up ha uh, having two digital elevation models so the first one was this which was quite huge which was quite huge and the other one was this which is quite small okay so this is the clipped digital elevation model so as i said the huge digital elevation model was clipped to make sure that it covers only the area of interest so after clipping i ended up having this uh, little digital elevation model so from here i did not use uh, this the previous digital elevation model which was huge i continued with the uh, clipped digital ele elevation model okay so this was the clipped digital elevation model so from here what i did was to prepare now the contours for my farm for my area okay again i went on raster then i went on extraction so if you can see i have this uh, contours so if i selected so if i select this you can see we have this uh, interface now from here the input layer i just made 
sure that the input layer is the clipped dam which was which was this one and not this huge uh, the, uh, digital elevation model file so the input layer is the clipped dam then i just leave uh, this the way it is and again with the interval between contours this is very important because my area was quite small having a 10 meters uh, interval between the contours did not work so what i did is that to is to use a very little contour interval and for my case what i did was to make sure that at least i have 0 0.3 meters all the way to uh, 0 0.2 meters and um, what worked well for me was uh, 0 0.3 meters okay so i went on and i, I click run and everything went okay so from here i had two files so this one here of course with contours and if you can see we have some contours around this area so if i deactivate this you can see for now we have uh, three files so the first one was the uh, kml file of, of course which which i converted into a geo package file then the other file was the clip uh, digital elevation model okay and the other one now is the contours okay so if i deactivate if i deactivate this i clipped them you can see for now things that are taking a shape and uh, we have this farm and is covered with contours okay so from here what i did and if so if i zoom you can see our contours are quite sharp and uh, this is something that we don't really want we want our contours to be as smooth as possible so what i did from here was to use uh, the processing tool and if i go to processing tool of course in vector geometry okay in if i type here smooth you can see we have this uh, vector geometry and one of the algorithms or the functions is the smooth so i used this uh, smooth to make sure that i to make sure that my contours are not as sharp as they as they are for now so from here what i did was to click run and of course to close this interface then from here if you can see for now we have two files okay we have this which is uh, the contours which are sharp and we also have this one here which is a smooth uh, smooth contours so if i click this you can see we have two contours so the first one here is this one which is uh, sharp and the other one is this which is a little bit smooth compared to the previous one so i went with uh, this one and for now if you see we have this kind of contours and uh, not just contours we also have some numbers here so to come to uh, to come up with this kind of numbers what i did was to right click this smooth uh, contour i guess smooth contours interval and um, i went and select properties so after selecting properties so if i select labels you can see i have some several options here so from here what i did was to select the labels okay to select single labels sorry select uh, single labels then this window here was activated and by default this elevation value was active but what i needed is to have like a uh, meter in front of these values okay so if you can see for now we only have values but we don't have uh, that little m in front of the of the numbers so what i did was to use this function or this function so as you can see for now we have the ele elevation then we have these two symbols and we also have this uh, m here so as soon as i apply it you can see for now we have this m around this area here i managed to come up with the contours not just uh, contours but also contours with the numbers of course with the m which indicated that these figures are in meters then from there what i did was to select a placement okay and i just made sure that the mode is curved and also the positions for the values was on the line okay on the line and um of course just in the other value i just make sure that the distance between values is 200 millimeters okay so this is the repeat, uh, repeating uh, repetitions for my labels 
okay so from here what i did was again to right click this and select the properties then from here as you can see we have the formatting so from here what i did was to uh, again go back and select our properties then from here as you can see not only labels we also have our symbols then what what i wanted was to make sure that to have this kind of um, thick lines between the contours and uh, what i did from there is to select this is to select this one and then select edit and i pasted uh, this uh, code here of course it is the python code so i pasted it here and um, i ended up uh, having this kind of lines okay as you can see we have these lines which are quite thick compared to the other ones which are quite thin okay then from here i just clicked apply and uh, i closed everything so up to this point i had this kind of layout okay so far we have the contours but the question was how can we use these contours to make sure that at least we take the advantage of them to know where to allocate our key infrastructure in our scheme let me show you what i did for now as i said we have we had the contours already so the question is how can we use these contours to allocate our key infrastructures of course for now we know exactly where the borehole is located but where or which is the best position which we can allocate our key infrastructures like our storage tanks so what i did of course the borehole was here but the question is by using these contours if you look at them clearly you can see the highest point we have two highest points or actually three so the first one at uh, the first one was this one the also this one and also this one so for me i opted to go with uh, this area here and uh, what i did to is to introduce this uh, storage tank so we have a borehole around this area and we also have a, a storage tank of course this is the store is the proposed storage tank which will be constructed around this area so far we uh, what we had is two points so this was the borehole and also this one here was the storage tank so what i needed is to link at uh, these two points the borehole and the storage tank with the pipe so i come up i came up with uh, this uh, line here and uh, from here what i did was to draw this pipeline of course by taking into account the contours alignment okay so i started from here and if you can see this is the area that is quite a flat so i went around this area and again i went around this area here all the way to this uh, area which for my opinion was the best place for our storage tank. so the total length for this pipe is around uh, 314.8 meters at the end i prepared this map and if you can tell we have this uh, our storage tank we also have contours and we also have some important parameter for any map as i said we have several ways that we can use to come up with contour map or with the elevation values but one of them is by using gis and this is what i did to come up with such a map so in the next story i'm going to cover how to size the pump for this scheme of course by using a water gems and ipanet so with that being said thank you and i'll see you in the next tutorial